Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the blog series using Django and React.js. In this one, we'll start configuring the utility functions, plugins, and also layouts of the application that we will be working on. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. Now I have a couple of tutorials on my channel already where I have talked about how to work with React utility functions, creating layouts like private routes and main wrappers. I've also done things like create plugins for Toast, Moments, JS, use user data. And if you've been following along with me, then you know that I have also created some authentication stores in the past where we worked with use auth store. And I have, I have like three projects where I have come constantly built out all those piece of code from scratch and where we also talked about creating things like authentication functions axios functions constant and also doing things like inheriting and extending axios life cycle and you know all this stuff so i don't want to go the same route in this tutorial instead i want to reuse what i already have since it's exactly the same thing, no changes, I will be reusing exactly the same thing. But just to make things more easier for you, just to make things more clear and understandable for you, I have added well-detailed comments for each and every line of the code to make it way more easier for you to understand what each code will be doing in case for any reason you haven't taken any of the previous tutorial, so which I will highly recommend that you should do to understand how all these functions that we'll be reusing, how the works. So let's open up the GitHub repository. I believe I have provided this for you guys. And all I want you to do is click on this one called reusedfunctions.zip. And I want you to go ahead and download this. So I think this is the button to download the raw file. You can click on that and there you go, it has been downloaded. Go ahead, open that up. I'll just take this and put it on my desktop. And let me put it somewhere here, okay? So right now, if I open this up, you can see I have layouts and layouts, you see these two files here. I, can, I also have plugins, you see these three files here. I also have store, you see this one file. I also have utils, you see all these files, okay? So the very first thing that I want to do is go ahead take all these files here, just copy them. And then I want you to open up the project. So remember it's um, Django React blog front end, right? And you might be asking, okay, where are we gonna put all these plugins? Where are we gonna put all these utility functions and all this? Open up the source and just over here, paste what you copied, as simple as that, as simple as this. So now if you go ahead, open up your code editor, you will now see that we have all those coming in here in the source, right? That is pretty cool. So now if you open up one of this, for example, let's say I want to open up the store, the utils, use axios. Take a close look at this. You can see that I have comments for each and every one of the line. So you can see this line over here simply checks if access token has expired, then we refresh it. And you can also see comments for each and every one of this, right? So this will make your life way easier. You can always refer back to the code and understand what it's doing. Same for, okay, actually constant is straightforward. You just define variables and assign some data to them. If you open up Axios JS, you can see well detailed, well commented, and well documented so that you understand everything that is going on, even without taking a tutorial for it. And that is how we have it for all the codes. See, even the imports have comments explaining what they do, what we are importing. And you can see over here, see comments, 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 comments. And I believe this should make your life easy and it should make it fun for you to still follow along with the tutorial. So one more thing that I want to explain will be for the plugin. Open up plugin and open up moments.js. So if you followed along with my format tutorials, or the tutorials that I've made in the past, then you will know that I really like the Moment library because it helps format our dates 
to whatever formats that we want to use, whatever lining up or, you know, pretty much however we want to format our date. But sometimes it actually gets very redundant because we need, we need to write a long line of code to get something to work. So all I did was pretty much create this simple piece of code, this function over here, that's when this moment is called passing your date, it automatically formats the date for us and return this back to us. So you can see that what I did over here was create a function called moment. This function, you could call it anything, but I called it moment just to stick to naming convention. And I passed in date as the parameter. And this line of code over here is what I use in all my tutorials to format date. So what is going to happen is in the future, as soon as we import this comment to any file in our code and pass in the date, it will format it using this format over here. Simple, simple. So another thing here is the toast.js. This one too is actually very simple. So instead of always having to import toast and do the toast.fire, why can't we make it simpler for ourselves by just importing or creating a new function that just takes icon, title, and text. In fact, you could go ahead and get rid of the text to even make things more simpler. Simple for you, you get rid of the text. So once you call this toast function and pass an icon, maybe success, and pass in title, maybe registration successful, then it will immediately call all this function here and it will go ahead and perform this toast for you. So see, we'll do something like this. We import toast in the future. Then we say toast like this, and then we'll pass in icon should be success and text should be post liked. Guys, this is all you need to do to be able to call the toast. But before, without doing this like this, what we do is write all this code here, which really doesn't make sense when we can just put it in a piece of function and reuse it whenever we want. I hope this is clear and I hope you understand everything that is going on. Okay, and also finally for the use user data, quite explanatory, quite straight to the point. I believe I've worked with this a lot of times in my tutorial, so you can actually refer to it again. I've got comments for you to explain everything that is going on. You can see over here, all we pretty much do is we grab access and refresh token, destructure it, and finally return any, everything that we've gotten from that token back to the, or to wherever function that we'll be using it. So we can say something like, use user data dot user id or use user data dot username dot full name dot email to fetch the informations of a user i hope that makes sense so for now that is pretty much everything that we need let's go ahead and create one simple view so that you guys see how things work over here so now i want to start off by coming over here in the source i will create a new folder called views and in this views, I will create a new folder called core. So in these views, I will create new folder core. And in this core, I will create a new file called index.jsx. And then I want to create RAFCE. So I want you to download this plugin called ES6, ES7, React Native, um, Funk extension that can help you easily work with boilerplate codes let me look for it so all you need to do is know what the shortcuts are and as soon as you type it is to create boilerplate codes for you this is it over here you can see es7 react redux react native snippets an extension for react native and redux in gsx in javascript typescript with es7 syntax it's customizable it's built in integration with Prettier. so if you download that and you type out RAFCE, you can see that it immediately creates this boilerplate arrow function for you. Oh, good. So let me see. All right, so when we have this, this is pretty much what we want. Now, if you open up the app JSX for now, you can see that this is what we have, right? So how about we override this and instead show our index JSX that we just created right now. So it's a little bit, just a little bit complex, but don't worry, we'll get through it. And this is how it is done. So first and foremost, I want you to go ahead, remove everything that we have in this app. So we remove everything that we have in the return, firstly. 
and then we remove this and all the imports there you go this is exactly what i want and then i want us to import a couple of things just to take away or you, you know what just remove everything and just stick to it like this so when your code is running like this you shouldn't see anything show up here anymore so what i want you to do is go ahead and import a couple of things i want you to import routes so import routes let me firstly say from react router dom react router dom so i want to import routes i also want to import routes and i also want to import the browser route and then let's go ahead and import index which is the function that we just created right now and i also want to import the main wrapper remember all those um things that we created gonna get down here import main wrapper from dot dot slash source slash layout slash main wrapper okay yep that's what i want so now that we have all this let's go ahead and in here let's go ahead and extend a couple of things firstly in the return you should now open up brackets like that and also open up react fragments like that and then i want you to call the browser router just like this and in here i want you to then create another one for the main wrapper let me take this and put it here there you go main wrapper and in the main wrapper let's create the routes so routes like this good and now in the routes we can now create individual routes so this is how it's gonna it's, it's gonna be done then we could create a path so as soon as we visit the home page let's render the index element so as soon as we visit the home page we render the index element as simple as that so with this now if you come over here and open up this page and um let's see let me break out from the server and rerun it again one more time okay there you go and allow this to reload okay i think we still have a couple of issues with css files so open up index css and comment out everything that you have in there and also app css comment out everything that we have there and then you can see that we don't have any issue with css anymore good so let's see if we have any issue any problem in the console that is preventing our application from running okay i think we might be getting an issue from routes so in app gsx over here um, if i comment this out yeah if i comment that out we don't we don't have the issue anymore okay the problem is this that that's my problem this actually is a component so instead of calling it this way you should put it in its own um self-closing tag just like this okay let's see since the tag index is unrecognized in the browser let me stop my server and run it again just to be sure that everything is going as expected so if you meant to render a react component starts its name with an oh yeah i actually saw that and it escaped my mind so we need to make sure that all react components starts with uppercase okay it's a must this was a mistake on my end so please change that change that make sure that it all starts with an uppercase and let's also change up all this this should be uppercase this should be uppercase i'm gonna make this to uppercase and when you get back to the app jsx power importing make this to be an uppercase okay and this also an uppercase then you can go ahead and save your program and there you go you can now see we have index here so congratulations we now successfully have index and that is working as i expected so instead of writing your codes in here in the app gsx we can now take a new turn and start writing our codes in here so that means i can now do things like index 
and I can open up a H1 tag and say hello. Hello. But why are we getting this issue? That is pretty much because we need to wrap everything in our application with React fragments. Then you can see that is working. So guys, that is pretty much it. I believe we have set up our projects the way we want them to work. In the next one, we will get started with importing all the templates that we will be using, the authentication templates, the call templates, the dashboard templates, pretty much all the templates that we'll be making use of. And hopefully you guys will understand that. So hopefully you did learn something new from this video and enjoyed it. I hope the reusing of the functions that we did earlier in the video did not confuse you. If there is something that you don't understand, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be very happy to help you out. Do make sure to drop a sub on the channel. You can also consider liking the video and also consider checking out nestblog.app to get free to use components to build websites faster. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, mad love. Peace out.